guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles here on YouTube and on Instagram. And today we're going to do another introduction video for animals that have not been introduced here on YouTube yet. They have been introduced on Instagram though, so if you follow me on Instagram, you've already met them. But we're going to go ahead and introduce them here today. Um, hopefully this is straight and not like crooked behind me. Um, this is my first time using it to film in a while. I bought it a year ago for a project I was working on and then never did anything with those videos, never launched that project that I was working on. So, and then I lost this backdrop and I just found it again. So, yeah. <laughs> so I figured, my room's a little bit a mess right now. There's no good spot for me to really film in my room. So, we'll throw it up for this video so I have a kind of nice er background. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go get the animals we're gonna meet today, and I'll tell you a little bit about their backstory and all about them. Alright, are you guys ready? This is gonna be difficult because I'm trying to like double hand it. But here we go. So these are some of the newer additions you guys haven't met yet here on YouTube. Let's see if I can hold them both at the same time. Um, we're working on handling with them. They're not the biggest fans of it. But whoop. <laughs> We're working on it. So these are my two African fat-tailed geckos. Um, it was a rehoming situation. Uh, African fat-tailed geckos have been on my want list uh, for education because geckos like this, like um, leopard geckos and African fat-tails. I'm going to put one of them down. <laughs> Alright, I put one down. Um, anyway, geckos like this are really good for education programs with really young children like nursery schools, preschools, just really young kids, kids that are scared of reptiles and snakes. Um, geckos are a really, really good animal to present to them. So I've got Queso, my leopard gecko, who's going to be an education animal. Then I wanted a fat tail so that I had a variety. Um, so these two were being rehomed and I went pick them up. Um, they were being rehomed together. They've lived together their whole lives. They might be sisters, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, I do keep them housed together because, like I said, they have been together their whole life. And African fat tails, females are one of the reptile species that you can kind of play around with keeping them together. Um, you do still want to use caution and be really smart about how you're doing it, um, but I have had no issues with them. And like I said, they've lived together their whole lives. So this woman, God love her, she tried to do right by them. Um, she got them in a rehoming situation. Um, if I remember correctly, because I just quickly read through the text again, I've had them for months now. So I'm a little blurry on the details, but I want to say her friend got them from someone who wasn't taking very good care of them, um, wasn't supplementing their food at all, um, and then her friend gave them to her, and she had them for a while. Um, and then she decided to rehome them. She wanted them to go to, if I remember correctly, I think she said her kids moved out and she wanted them to go to a home that would give them more time or priority or something or rather. Um, but she did have others, like she had day geckos and everything. So I think they were going to focus on the day geckos and whatnot and she's rehoming these guys because she didn't really have much of an interest in them. Um, or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But, um, yeah. So these guys are roughly three years old. Um, this one is bigger, she's definitely three years old. The smaller one, she said maybe two. So between two and three. She said she had them for like three years though. So I'm just assuming, I'm just saying they're both three years old just to make it easy. Um, there was three of them at one point. She had them in a 40 gallon breeder. And then the third one died mysteriously one day. Um, and then these two are living in a 10 gallon tank together. I don't know how long they've been in a 10 gallon tank, but she gave them to me in a 10 gallon tank. So obviously not ideal for one gecko, definitely not ideal if you're going to cohab. If you're cohabbing, you definitely want plenty of space so they can have their own space and their own hides and everything um, in their enclosure right now because um, I did upgrade them from the 10 gallon to a exoterra it's still not as big as i would like um but it's what i had right now because i'm doing tons of upgrades right now and so they will be getting zero's exoterra when zero gets his new enclosure 
and the new enclosures that allow me to make all these upgrades happen are almost done. I just have to order glass for the doors and install the lights and we're pretty much good to go. So it should be soon, but they are in a bigger exoterra right now. Um, so much better as far as size goes for them. Not ideal, but much better. They have plenty of space for their own hides. I have two food dishes in there, so they each have their own food dishes. There should be no fighting over food. Um, I just make sure that they both get their share of food. They both still look good. Um, they're nice and thick the way they're supposed to look. No one looks like they're losing weight. And they're just, they're getting long, no injuries. And so yeah. Um, I was thinking about messing around with separating them. Um, but because they have lived together their entire lives, and they're females and fat tails are one of the species you can more or less cohab with. I decided to just let leave them be um, and just do what I can to make sure that the cohabbing is successful. Okay, so backstories out of the way. Um, let's talk about them individually. So like I said, one is big, one is smaller. She thinks the smaller one is younger, but we don't really know. Um, they're basically three years old. So the bigger one here, for my, whoop, stop stepping on your sister. So for all you Avatar fans out there, I got them the same time Avatar was put on Netflix. And so it was bringing up a lot of childhood memories. So their names are Yue and Suki. So the bigger one is Yue. Because I always thought of Yue as like the really responsible one. You know, she did her duties, whatever. Um, so she's bigger, she's, they think, older, so she's UA. The smaller one I named Suki, just because Suki makes me think of, get your foot off her head. Just because Suki makes me think of someone young and fun and spunky, um, since she's the smaller one and possibly younger, that's why I named her Suki. Now, Suki, you may know, has a weird foot. She does have a little bubble foot. Um, apparently she's had this her whole life. No one has brought her to a vet to get checked out. Um, so now that things are kind of returning back to normal, um, vet offices are opening back up and accepting new patients, I am going to be scheduling her appointment to have it looked at. Um, so that's why I wanted to do this introduction video so that I can film a new video about her foot and going and taking her to the vet to get it treated. Um, talking to my friend Jordan Jones. Some of you may know her from Instagram. Um, she is a reptile mom and a wildlife rehabilitator. Um, I talked to her and we kind of examined it, sent her pictures, she asked me questions. We think it's probably just a cyst that needs to be drained, but she's had it for her whole life. So it's kind of mind-blowing, but she walks totally fine on it. I can poke at it and she doesn't do anything. Um, so I don't think it's doing much in the way of decreasing her quality of life um, so it possibly is just a cyst that needs to be drained but we won't know until I get her to a vet so when I got them um, the reptile vets around me within like a two hour radius um, they weren't accepting new patients they were closed yada yada one of them stopped seeing reptiles altogether so I decided since um, she was walking around on fine and it's been years of her having it that she could wait a little bit longer for her offices to open back up. So now they're doing that, she will see a vet. Let's get a close up look. Here is Yue. And I do believe that Yue has a regrown tail if you look at it. It is a little bulbasauri, um, so I definitely believe regrown. And I'm not certain, but I believe Suki has a partial regrown tail. I believe just the end is regrown. But I'm not 100% certain. I can't tell if it's focused or not. Hopefully it's focused. But you can tell it's a little weird on the end. So these are the new little girls. Um, I will give you an update video when I take Suki to the vet. And then we'll have another update video when they get their new enclosure. It will be bioactive and will be much bigger. So I'm very excited for that video. So... Make sure to stay tuned for that. And yeah, so I'm gonna go put them away because they've done really well and they're probably over all this handling. Um, so if you guys want to make sure to catch the updates on Suki's foot and to see their bioactive enclosure when that time comes, 
make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it and we'll see you for the next video bye